What is up and is going on guys, Simpsy here and welcome to another episode of my FIFA 15 Manchester United crew mode. In today's episode we have our first match in the Champions League group stage against Juventus. Now a headline has come through, Manchester United flourished without Massa. Now, I guess... I don't say we flourished. One matter was crucial in the success for last season, so I don't really agree with that headline all that too much, but I do agree that we're flourishing, <laughs> to say the least. So we have a match against Juventus here. Vidal and Marquisio are actually facing their former side, which is fantastic. Um, also, later on in the episode, we have the squad report, and then we have a match against Arsenal. Now, um, I just want to talk about David De Gea for the time being, and this will tie into what happened in the last episode. Now, I don't know what's wrong with my David De Gea. He's been stunted in growth. Um, he's been letting in goals left, right, and center. So maybe I have to think about getting a new goalkeeper in January. I love David De Gea. He's a fantastic player. But um, I don't know why. Like He's not going up in stats. Maybe he hasn't got a very high high overall in this FIFA. But So I might sign a new player and then like loan him out for a bit, a new goalkeeper. Um, but that ties into the... Uh, the match against Liverpool last in the last episode. We ended up drawing 2-2 against Liverpool, uh, which was disappointing. I really wanted to get a win against the Scousers. Ronaldo and Messi both picked up one goal piece, and it was in the 90th minute, Steven Gerrard ended up coming uh, coming through at the goal, and he actually hit, I guess it was more Marquisio's fault, wasn't it? He manages to hit the defender and uh, actually like deflected off it. But David Ayer just kind of like stood there and I don't know, he at least should have made an attempt. But this hasn't been a, it wasn't like all this um, like ideas and emotions were built up because of that match. This has been happening all last season. So I'm going to give David Ayer one more season and then we'll see what happens to him next. Um, but yeah, let me know about the David De Gea situation in the comment section down below. And then later on that episode, we ended up versing Tottenham Hotspur. We ended up winning 4-0. Messi ended up picking up his first hat-trick and the man of the match. But uh, obviously, his, Messi's hat-trick was absolutely fantastic. was the main highlight of that f match. But I think the unsung hero was Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha came off the bench, ended up picking up an assist for Messi. And one-on-one uh, -on -one with the goalkeeper, he did get brought down in the penalty box. And I thought that uh, who else would deserve to take it? And uh, Wilfred Zaha stepped up for his first penalty for United and absolutely buried it. Uh, he was playing absolutely fantastic. And as we were here against Juventus... We're winning 4-0 against them. Um, we, they were on the counter-attack. We pushed them way too easily. And Juventus uh, uh, usually play a three-at-the-back formation. And now we're playing like a 3-5-2. So we were countering them left, right, and center. And uh, it was just absolutely ridiculous how rampant we were going against them. Ronaldo picking up another goal here. So, guys, if you are enjoying this Manchester United career mode, make sure to leave a like to support this series and my channel. I do put a lot of effort into these videos, and a simple like really does go a long way. Absolutely fantastic goal there from Ronaldo, however. however. And we do have the squad report uh, coming up very shortly. Messi makes it 6-0, and uh, this was just an absolute rout. Juventus aren't the form of, like, when you're like, oh, we ended up beating Juventus 6-0, you'd be like, oh, that's unrealistic. Once again, realistic. I don't. I never said I was doing realistic career mode. Huh? <laughs> um, Juventus aren't the side they used to be. We have Vidal and Marquisio on my team. They don't have Paul Bogba anymore, so it's realistic. Juventus are on the decline, and uh, we end up beating them. Ronaldo picked up a hat trick. Messi picked up two goals, and uh, Rooney ends up picking up one as well. So this front three is just absolutely deadly and uh, I really am enjoying this career mode. I, I hope you can tell in my voice that I am. So um, we are going to, well I actually made a decision. Even though Marquisio has gone up, a, he's gone up two already. I'll be showing that in the squad report. I'm pretty sure he has. Um, I wanted to field Adnan because Janazai is 21 years of age He's got four-star weak foot, four-star skills. Now, I didn't really like him in the first season because he just didn't—he didn't feel very good on. He felt fantastic on the ball, but he just didn't have that those stats. He, I don't know. He just, I just didn't like him that much. But now he's gone up a, a significant amount of uh, overall. I'm gonna play him in the midfield because Marquisio, even though he's a fantastic world-class player, he's 30 years old, and I really want to give Adnan a bit of a run in the side. So I will be playing Adnan as a centre mid. He can play on the left and the right, and he actually can play as a cam. So he has gone up a plus one. He is kind of unhappy, so I don't want him to leave Old Trafford um, because I would like to play with him in the future. Vidal hasn't gone up plus any. Marco Royce has gone up a plus one. Rooney's gone up a plus, uh, hasn't gone up any. Messi 
hasn't as well, and neither has Ronaldo. But to have two players up front as striker to be 94 overall, ridiculous. Wilfred Zaha has gone up a plus one. Shakiri's gone up a plus one. We've been rotating him and uh, Forenzi, but I don't know, just hasn't been getting into the side. But yeah, Marquisio has gone up a plus two. I find that absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's good to see. Um, but we do have a match here against Arsenal now, a big match. Uh, so I really can't wait to bring it to you guys. Edison Cavani is the top goal scorer of the Premier League at the moment, followed by Ronaldo on five. But we do have a lot of other players in the uh, the top ten and whatnot. So guys, let me know in the comment section down below who do you think will be the top goal scorer of the Barclays Premier League. Well, be, oh, sorry, not the Premier. Well, I guess you can do that as well. But let me know who's going to be the top goal scorer at United. Will it be Messi? Will it be Ronaldo with one season under his belt? Or will it be Rooney, the cam? Let me know in the comments. We are facing our former player here in Danny Welbeck. Um, that's really the only note to take from that match against Arsenal side lineup. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about my main objectives for this season. My main objective is to win the Premier League for a third time. I think we can do that, uh, seeing as we've signed Messi now, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Um, I would like to win the Champions League again, but whether or not that's possible or not, uh, we'll see. We do, have a pretty, we do have a decent amount of squad depth. Obviously, Messi up front might be able to give us a little bit of edge. But uh, Danny Welbeck there, oh, my God, <laughs> threw on goal. Hits the post, and that's just typical Danny Welbeck for you there. Like, I, I really do love Danny Welbeck. Uh, I'm talking more about real life now. I loved him. He was a Manchester United player, born and raised. I love that, but I didn't really like him as a player all that too much. I didn't think he was that good. So I'm I'm sorry, United fans, but uh, I am a United fan myself. But I, I really liked him. I just didn't end up liking him in the end. But we do get a penalty here, and it's not the infamous Wilfred Zaha stepping up for us. We're going to step up with Ronaldo. And I was actually curious to see who is my best penalty kick taker, and it is it is Vidal on paper, but I think Ronaldo has better curve. So as you see there, I didn't put it straight down the middle. I put it slightly to the net, to the left. We ended up beating Chesney, and uh, Ronaldo starts off the scoring against Arsenal. So what a celebration there. Di Maria... It's just, I just love that. I, I was just amazed just looking at all the United players. So we've just got such a fantastic side with Messi, Ronaldo up front. I can't believe that we have Messi. Uh, absolutely ridiculous. Wayne Rooney creating the plays in the cam. We've got Marco Royce and Angel Di Maria bombing down the wins. And we also have Vidal, the strong center defensive wit. And we also have um, Adnan Janazai, the young inspirational player to push up. But we do end up conceding to Arsenal to make it 1-1. But through on goal here, Ronaldo nearly makes it 2-1. And uh, Chesney was nearly having a as bad a season as David De Gea had last season. Oh, I guess he didn't really have that much. I'm giving a bit of stick, to be honest. I just feel like he's just the weakest link in the side at the moment. But Ronaldo, uh, wanting to get his hat-trick, unselfish, feeds it to Vidal, who has a shot off, and Chesney managed to save that one. But on the counter-attack here in the 90th minute, Messi one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, puts it in to the top left-hand corner, uh, top right-hand corner, and uh, makes it 3-1 against Arsenal. Messi scoring goal, the number nine. I did give him Falcao's number, and that's what he was at... Uh, Barca as well. So guys, thank you very much for watching if you watched all the way through. I really do appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like on this video to support this series and my channel, and I'll be bringing out more career mode tomorrow for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Simpsia Matt Lays, my friends. Good.